We've got a little uh, breaking news. The police scanners were going crazy in the Wayne TV newsroom tonight. Apparently, there was an Amish arsonist on the loose, considering the number of barn burners we had in Northeast Indiana. So I've been waiting all season. I've been waiting all season to use that. Wow. Conference races being churned like homemade butter. That includes one in the SAC, just one unbeaten team in the ACAC with two. All right, we're going to start in the SAC, where you can put the horse before the buggy, or maybe you can't. There's still plenty of basketball left, but no team is undefeated in conference, fl conference play. In fact, four teams, Northrop, Northside, Concordia, and Lures, each have one loss and lead the title chase. Two of those powers going head-to-head -head at Bay Hay Arena, Northrop and Northside, in what could be an elimination game for that conference title. Pick it up in the first quarter, Andy Bachman. How clutch has this guy been all season? Ten points in the first quarter alone. How about Bachman? Also knows how to give up the basketball. Quilin Howard Upshaw, he had 14 in the first half, 18-11, Northside after one. Northrop's Bryson Scott to Brenton Scott. Pretty good combo to have if you're Mr. Coolman, then Brenton Scott in the corner for three, 31-29. Northrop up by a pair at the half. Shabazz colleague trying to draw something up. This was not what he had planned. Brenton Scott with the deuce. Eight-zip run ends the third, and Northrop up by 10, heading into the final frame. Bachman going down low, knocks down the two. He had 20 in the game. Then it's Antonio Wilson, the human eraser to Howard Upshaw for the layup. He had 21 points, but that would cut the lead to two. However, with four minutes left, Northside wouldn't get a field goal for the rest of the game. Brenton Scott coming up huge there. He had 18, and Northrop hangs on to win at Baye, 54 to 50. Our guys showed a lot of heart, not giving in to any fatigue, uh, and just fighting, doing the things it takes to win. We didn't score well, uh, but we also were able to execute some stuff then, get fouled, and get some stops. Defense at the end. Uh... You know, we did, you know, we knew that, you know, coming out they were going to be amped up, you know, ready to play us and stuff. So, you know, if we clamp down on defense, you know, we cut them out with the win. Big win for Northrop. Northside hosts Concord tomorrow. Northrop to host Marion. Girls' side of this SAC doubleheader. Pick it up with Northside doing some damage and doing it on offense. Jacole Jones, JJ, has been big for the Redskins this year. Ten points for her on night. Northrop coming back. Quila Jackson. With a two down low, she had 10 points for the Bruins. Northside Sierra Miranda, she's having herself a, a nice season for those Redskins. Goes baseline, led Northside with 12, but Northrop's page ride says, uh, you're not going to beat us tonight as the Bruins win this one by 11, 55 to 44. Doubleheader out at Southside. Concordia boys looking to stay in the SEC title hunt before the game. Rayfield Davis of the Archers honored for scoring his 1,000th point during the SAC tournament. He's now fourth. All time on the Archers list. Mr. Davis scoring early to his team high 22, but pretty much all Concordia after that. Big Casey adding the long three. He had 18. Then Mark Rogers pulls up, hits the baseline. Jay, he had 12. Zach Schrand battling down low. He would have a game high 26 points. Jamaris Alexander had a nice game for Southside. He would have 16, but this one all Concordia tonight. 83. 61, the final on the girls' side of the battle. Concordia ranked 14th and 3A. South ranked 16th in 4A. Pick it up in the third quarter. Southside dominating. Ariana Simmons, nice work down low. She would have 17 points. Concordia, though, battling back. Courtney Smith with the 3. She had 16. The cadets get it as close as 5, but Simmons doing more work. And then it's freshman Brittany Klopt in two of her 12. The Archers actually were up 18 at one point. But again, here comes Concordia Lorena Marinko with the three. Then with 5.7 seconds left, and Alyssa Kmeyer, she ties it. The game goes in to overtime. But that's where South pretty much takes over. DeJoya Johnson hitting the bucket as the Cadets' final bucket falls short as Southside wins 70-67. You know, you can't underestimate anyone. You can't look at your lead too uh, too big. So, you know, whenever you get a chance, just close it out right away. There are some things that we could have done better that we didn't. We didn't take advantage of what we had, and it could have been an easy win, but we just did a lot of turnovers. It's good to have these tough games. You know, we had a tough one on Tuesday night against Huntington North. This obviously was a tough one. Didn't have to be. We forced it to be. Um, but it's, it does get us ready for, you know, next week, and it does get us ready for the tournament. South hosts Snyder next Wednesday. Concordia hosts Carroll on that same night. Well, let's go back to the boys. Snyder coming in with a chance to make some noise in the conference. The Panthers 
at Bishop Dwanger. Picked this one up in the third quarter, and the Saints were in control. Jalen West hits the jumper. He would have 12. Then Greg Kaiser would dial long distance. He had 16. The fans out there loving it, although I can't see that guy in the middle. Tough to see. He had orange on, though. Wilson we'll Ganga uh, muscling down low in for two, but Snyder comes back in the fourth. Great use of the screen there by Nick Lewis. He had 18. Then Akeem Sel uh, Kelso, the spinning, whirling dervish. And Snyder is getting the victory tonight, 66-59-5. I love it when Mr. Kaiser gets on a roll. Final stop in the SAC, Harding at Wayne. Harding actually up by nine and a half. That hair is not tasty. Third quarter, Harding's Mike Stevenson, the babyface assassin, gets the layup right there. Wayne's Tyree Addison, a little jumper in the lane, but Harding going to six foot seven senior A.J. Milligan. It's a good option. He had 16 points in this one. Then it's Marcellus Byers came on with a big bucket, gets the and one there. Al Gooden's team up 12 after three. Fourth quarter, Xavier Brown. One of the best in the SAC, cuts it to 70 and 16 points to lead the generals. But there's old Mr. Stevenson. <laughs> Babyface. Babyface assassin at 17. Nice game. Harding wins at 63 to 49. Well, coming up after the break, both Leo and Bluffton come in undefeated in ACAC play. We'll see the Lions and Tigers. No Bears. Oh, my. Oh, my. And Homestead, the only undefeated in the NHC. Would they stay that way after a visit from DeKalb? That and a huge game at Warsaw, all coming up after the break. With wins against Carroll and Columbia City, Homestead is in the driver's seat when it comes to the NHC. The Spartans leading the race for the title, 4-0 in the league, but Coach Johnson's team hoping to avoid a barren-sized pothole tonight. Sparty's facing a DeKalb team that's better than its 5-7 record. Pick this one up. Nick Gamble driving in. Layup. Bucket. Foul. He would have 13 on the night, but back comes DeKalb and Addison Dobb drills. The three, keeping the Barons close. Back for the Spartans, Adam Hackett to Joe Oliveri. The three, Homestead was just up four. Here comes DeKalb and Daub again. Bucket in the foul. He would have 15 points on the night, but Homestead would pull away in this one. Evan Rhodes, two of his 13 as the Spartans do get the win, 52-44. Norwell trying to stay in the hunt. Coaches versus Cancer Night down in Ossian as the Knights versus the Knights or Norwell versus East Noble. First quarter, Norwell out to a great start. Grant Baker with the three. One shy of a Baker's dozen. He had 12. Aldo Sanchez pops in the three for Norwell and uh, Norwell out to a 10-1 run to start this one. East Noble's Kyle Reese gets the and one. Letty Snowball with 15 points in this game, but Mr. Sanchez gets this one right before the buzzer in the first quarter, and Noel up 10 after one. Second quarter, Josh Van Meter, the sophomore, can shoot it. He comes out, drains a three. He had 20, knocks down another, 22 to four at that point, and Norwell goes on to win this one, 66-43. In Columbia City trying to keep pace, the Eagles at New Haven. They always turn the lights out there at New Haven. But they Saves turn money. Them, they turn them back on eventually, though. Jared Murphy hacked on the three. But he puts it in as well. Four-point play there. Lacey Curry and Kyle Sovine, the little baby hook, keeping the Eagles close right there. Is Derek Hinton redirects it right into Matt with Thanky down low. But back comes the Bulldogs again. Curry feeding his teammates Caleb Heckley behind the arc. Matt with Thanky again in the paint, putting it in as Columbia City gets the win, 53-47. Final stop in the NHC, shiny and new Charger Fieldhouse. Carroll hosting Belmont. Belmont doing some nice passing right there. Kyle Learman to Matt Cronister. Cronister had six. Chargers Taylor Labundi. Go, go, gadget arms in the post. He had eight. You got to like that if you're a Chargers fan. How about Belmont? Nick Filling stopping and popping. And then Forrest Fullenkamp. Good to see that the knee is healthy. The quarterback buries the three. He had 11 points for Belmont in this one. Fast forward to the third quarter. Now Belmont's Peyton Selking stepping out behind the arc to bury the three. He had six, but Carroll's Tyler Alt. Oh, this is why he's one of the area's best. 16 points a game high. Carroll wins this one, 49-37. 
Well, now we go to the ACAC, where two teams share the conference lead heading into the night. The Lions and Tigers both in action tonight. And Rod Hissong, he's got more on the Allen County Athletic Conference. Well, when it comes to the ACAC, Leo and Bluffton are on a collision course. The Lions and Tigers play on February 10th. That's the last conference game of the season, and if things hold up, we'll determine the conference champion. Both teams 4-0 in league play tonight. Leo trying to stay unbeaten at Wooden. Those are interesting cards. Lions up comfortably in the second. Gage corner from the corner hits the three ball there. Leo bombing away tonight. Luke Peckel, Peppel, B3. That's a bingo. Three more points there. Woodland trying to stay in it, though. Nick Patterson, he's going to hit one from long range, but they would need a lot more of those. Big Spencer Muma going to do some work inside for the Warriors. He goes up in a lot of traffic there. But Leo's offense, too potent. Ryan Bolier, he'll drain the three from straight away. Leo, big winners tonight, 105-76 the final. Like Leo, Bluffton coming into the night, 4-0 in the conference. Tigers in Garrett. And Garrett, the Struggle early. Tigers, though, Michael Vanderkolk, he's going to get the layup there. And then Garrett's Brandon Porter through the defense to Drake Landis for the transition bucket. Then the Tigers, Cameron Gerber to Chandler Oki. He'd have a game-high 20 points. Time winding down, first quarter, Todd Fricky. He's going to beat the buzzer as the light goes. It would count. Everyone would need to regroup for Garrett. They would trail in the first quarter. And then Quinton Fiant, he's going to get the put back there and some traffic underneath. Landis. Again, coming across the paint, a little up and under. He would put in 16. Wouldn't be enough, though. Bluffton gets the win, 52-46. to 46. Yeah, All right, thank you, Rod. North Central Conference, Muncie Central at Huntington. Bearcats led by 6'8", junior Nick Osborne, already offers from IPFW Ball State <laughs> and Ohio. They are happy in Huntington. Nick Osborne, the layup, 5-zip Muncie Central out to an early lead. Huntington North, Austin Paul driving for the nice layup. You're going to see more from Huntington North and more from Mr. Paul. Vikings cut the lead to one on that bucket. Watch Osborne. That's why Dane Fife wants him in a blue and white jersey. But Kyle Bradburn knocking down one for the Vikings as Huntington North gets a big win tonight, 68-62, over those pesky Bearcats. And a huge matchup in the Northern Lakes Conference. Warsaw and Northwood both 4-0 league play. Apparently they like to save money as well. Nick Moore. Yeah, he would lead all scores tonight with 20 points. Mr. Moore, very smooth. Warsaw's Jared Tulum. His only bucket of the night, but very nice one right there. But check it out. End of the first quarter. Mr. Moore's got time. Where should I shoot it from? How about from 35 feet? Bottom. That beats the buzzer as Warsaw beats Northwood 44-32. We got more highlights zone coming up after the break. Hey, it's time for the play of the week, and that, we go back to Warsaw, Mr. Nick Moore, right at the third quarter, buzzer from 35 feet, bottom, he would have a game high, 20 points as Warsaw moves to 13-1 with a win over Northwood. Commons down in Louisiana, taking on the mud bugs of Bossier City, Shreveport, pick this one up in the first period, power play, Michael Radchuk shot, redirected by Derek Petrazzo in front, 2-zip K, second period, now 2-1, Bobby Phillips with a goal as the Comets go on to win this one by a score of 5-3. to three. And just so you want to know, the Mad Ants on the road tonight. They break the seven-game losing streak, 99-84 over the Stampede. 12-13 and 13 now on the season can go to get to 500 tomorrow against Idaho again. We'll do it all again next week.